consider a one, two. Okay. okay. Go back. Consider a gas, uh, gas turbine power plant with uh, regeneration with two stages of compression and two stages of expansion. And I'm going to have two compressions and two expansions. The overall pressure ratio of the cycle is nine. Okay, and I've highlighted this because this is it's very easy to, to go wrong when we have the overall pressure ratio. So whenever you guys see, let's actually highlight again. If you see this overall pressure heat ratio, that means that this is for the whole system, for the whole cycle, not for only particularly two um, parts of the cycle. And I'll talk about that mathematically in just a second. The air enters each stage of the compressor at 300 Kelvin and each stage of the turbine at 1200 Kelvin. Accounting for the variation of specific heat to temperature determine the minimum mass flow rate of air needed to develop a net power output of 110 megawatts. Okay. So now we have a gas turbine power plant with regeneration. What the hell does that mean? Well, first off, we have two compressions and two expansions, right? So now I have eight states instead of four. And this is going to grow even further. So that's why I'm telling you, you guys need to be on top of this. One to two, we have a TS diagram, okay? So this is, this is the compression right here. We're going from one to two on an isentropic compression. Okay, then we're gonna have a heat out here, rejection, and then we're gonna have another compression, another isentropic compression. Then we're gonna have a heat addition process here. We're gonna go all the way to five, okay? I'm actually gonna mark this as heat addition here. And then from five to six, we're gonna have another expansion isentropic expansion, sorry, the first isentropic expansion. And then we're gonna add a bit more heat in here. And then we're gonna go into a seventh state in which we're gonna have a second expansion go to eight. So we're gonna have work coming out of this cycle from five to six and from seven to eight. Both are gonna output some work. And then we're gonna have a big, um, a big heat rejection here stage over here. Okay, what's the idea behind the regeneration? Well, the idea is the following, okay? Let's take a simple system here, like the one we saw just before. Okay, we start here on one, two, three, four. Somebody once thought, okay, but if I'm rejecting heat over here, just giving Q away, what if I actually use that and reject heat towards my heat in? So instead of my rejected heat just going out of my system, I actually give some of this energy to my system. So I have this, this is what we call regeneration, right? So this is the regeneration here. Okay, so if I do that, what happens is, you see where I hatched the, um, the red lines? Can you see it, hopefully? So there's one over here, dotted line here, one there's a dotted line over here. So this Q that's going from here to here is equivalent of giving energy from here to here. So that's my Q regeneration right there. So that means that going from four to five, now I don't have to give enough energy for it to go from four to five. I just need to give energy to go from this point here, it's called X, X to five. So this Q in only has to take, it has to compensate for this increase in state here from X to five. Likewise, instead of rejecting all of this heat here from eight all the way to one, I only have to reject heat from Y to one. And you'll see a lot of these new cycles that we're going to start to look at are just things that were thought by someone like, okay, but what if I do this? And then they develop this engine or this system that is more efficient. Okay, so we gain efficiency by actually using the heat back into our system. All right, so this is the regeneration system. Now, there's something particularly useful for us on this one, which is the inlet temperatures and pressures are the same on all of them. The inlet, um, the maximum expansion ones are also the same in all of them. So state one, three, two, four, five, seven, six, and eight, they're all the same, right? One is the same as three, two is the same as four, five is the same as seven, six is the same as eight. They have the same temperature, therefore they have the same properties. What do we know about it? Well, we know T1, the inlet of the compressor is 300K, which means that the other inlet of the compressor, which is T3, is also 300K. We know that T5, which has been given as the, what do they say there? The, 
each stage of the turbine is at 1200K. So the turbine is over here, right? That's where we had the output. So each stage is at 1200K. So that means a T5 is 1200K. Also, T7 is 1200K. Okay, what else? What else? Well, the overall, overall R is 9. What does that mean? It means that my individual relationship between P is square root of 9. So it's 3. Why, why is it square root? Because I have two compressors and two turbines. Okay, so let's just do another random example here. If my overall, um, if my overall um, ratio was given as 27, and I had three of them, then I would take the square root, not square root, take the square the root of three of 27. If I have four, this will be the root of four and so forth. Okay, so it's always related to the amount of expansions and compressions that I have. So if it's overall nine, you have to watch out because if it says overall nine, it's not for a single one. It's not the maximum pressure over the minimum pressure because it's for two of them. So it's a multiplication of the two of them. So it's three, which is the maximum pressure over the minimum pressure. That's P2 over P1, which is the same as P4 over P3, which is the same as 5 over 6, which is the same as 7 over 8. There's a lot of things you need to know to be able to solve this problem. Uh, you'll see that once we get started, then it's not that bad, okay? So we have defined one, three, five, and seven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define two and four and six and seven, and six and eight, okay? What we need to find is the mass, the mass flow that's required for this guy to output, for us to have an output of 110 megawatts, okay? And just like on the video, remember that on the video I showed you guys, okay, so the area of these, the area of these curves is going to be the work output. The area inside this guy here is going to actually be the total work output because it's going to be the area of all the expansion minus the area of the compressions. Right? So it's the work that I give an output minus the work that I'm actually putting into my system to be able to compress them. So I can calculate my work output. I can calculate my work output by relating how much my turbine is giving me and subtracting how much I'm putting as work for the compressor. And the work for the turbine, well, it's gonna be the enthalpy from here to here, right? The difference in enthalpy and the difference in enthalpy from here to here. So the work of the turbine is gonna be delta H from five to six and delta H from seven to eight. Whilst the work on the compressor is gonna be my delta H from one to two and from three to four. So as long as I can identify state two, four, six and eight, I'm good to go. Right, about to change pages. You guys wanna take a screenshot, go for it. I'm running out of pages here. Okay, so. State one and three, we've known from the start, right? We know the temperature, it's 300. And if we know the temperature, we know everything else because we can go ahead and grab H1, which equals H3, which equals from the tables A17 again, because it's still here, 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and grab PR1 as well, right? Because I'm, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it's an isentropic transformation. Grab PR1, which is the same as PR3. And this PR1 is going to be 1.386. Okay, so check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the fact that this is an isentropic transformation to calculate PR2 and then define 2. And likewise, I'm going to take advantage of this as an isentropic transformation to calculate PR6. I cannot use CPs and CVs because I need to account for the difference in change according to the temperature, right? It says on the problem statement. So let's change colors and do states two and four.
Um, I don't know the temperature, but I know that P2 over P1 equals PR2 over PR1. And therefore, PR2 equals PR1, P2 over P1. P2, P1, we know that's 3, right? It's the relationship, the ratio that we just found this before in the last page. This is just going to be as simple as multiplying 1.386 by 3, which is going to give me 4.158. Once I have this guy, I've defined the state, and I've defined state 2 and 4 because they're the same. I can go ahead from the table and I can grab H2, which is going to be equal to H4, which is 411. You're going to, you're going to have to interpolate this one, okay, to be able to grab this value. I'll show you briefly, but you all know how to do that already. Okay, so we don't have precisely the PR value that we want, but we can interpolate between the other two values. We can grab the 411. Okay, now that we have defined this guy, we're good to go into the next state. Let's go to state um, five and seven, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. So state. Five and seven. It's a horrible five. Temperature was been, has been given from the start. It's twelve hundred. Okay. And again, same thing. H five, which is the same thing as H seven. We grab off the table. That's twelve seventy seven. And my um, PR five, which is the same thing as PR seven. I can grab off the table as well, and that's two hundred and thirty eight. I'm going to go ahead and calculate now state six and eight. If my PR, my P6 over my P5 equals my PR6 over my PR5, then that means that, again, watch out for that. Inverse relationship, right? It's going to be one over three this time instead of three. So that means that my PR6, which is what I'm looking for, will be my PR5 times P6 over P5. Okay, this is going to be one third. So I'm going to just be dividing the two, three, eight by three, which renders 79. Point thirty-three, which then gives me my enthalpy six. Enthalpy six of nine hundred and forty-six point thirty-six. Right. So pretty much what we did was we defined all the states that we need to be able to solve this question. And now what we can do is just calculate the work, right? Because after all, what we're looking for is the mass of this guy that is required, right? And I said that the work output, let's do a little separation here. And I said that the work output will be the work of the turbine minus the work of the compressor. Okay. What is the work of the turbine? Well, we talked about that, right? It's going to be the um, difference from, turbine is going to be the difference in H is from here to here plus from here to here. And they're exactly the same, right? This, this work output here of this turbine is H7 minus H8, which is exactly the same as H5 minus H6 because they're the same states, same H's and all that. So that's just two times, same thing. So two times H6 um, minus H5. And the one for the compressor is just going to be two times H2 um, minus H1. So this is the same thing as two times 946.30. Um, then small steps, that would be five is the greater than six, which is smallest. 
5.6. So that's 1277.79 minus 946.36 minus two times the difference from two to one. So 411 minus 300. 26 minus 300.19. Work output equals 662.86 kilojoules per kilograms. Okay, same unit exactly as entropy, right? Summing up entropy. So that means that every time I go around this cycle, oops, sorry, 400, I summed it wrong, 440. Always do this. 440.72, 440.72. So every time I go around the cycle, this guy outputs 440 kilojoules per kilogram. If the question states that, okay, what do you need? What do you need to have a power output of 110 megajoules, uh, megawatts. Is it megajoules or megawatts? Forget. 110 times 10 to the six megawatts. Okay, so that's the same thing as 110 times 10 to the third um, kilowatts, which is the same thing as 110 times 10 to the third kilojoules per second. Okay, so if I want to know what it takes to have this and I have this, I just need to divide this by that, right? And the units, I'm gonna cancel out, I'm gonna do F of mass. Let's do it in a different color. My mass flow rate required will be 110 times 10 to the, uh, the third kilojoules per second divided by 440.72 kilojoules per kilograms. Kilojoules gets kilojoules. Kilograms go to the top, so it's kilograms per second. And this is about 250. I got 249.59, so this 249.6. Probably 250 would be better. Better answer here in this case. So for this um, power plant, I think it's a power plant. Uh, for this power plant, for it to be able to generate 110 megawatts we need to put 250 kilograms of air per second through it. And that's what we're saying as a conclusion to this problem. Um, go ahead and stop record now. And I'll let you guys ask questions if you have any questions. No, 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 I guess, sorry, sorry, let's stop.